To be a prophetic artist or prophetic musician is to really be that artist who's just a friend of God. It's just illustrating his voice. When you're looking at prophetic art, it's really a combination of applying the active word of the Lord, His voice, hearing His voice, and bringing it to a visual component that brings it from an invisible to a visible place. My goal as a prophetic musician is to hear what that sounds like, getting to know Jesus, um, through sound and hearing what does, for example, like the voice of thunder or what does mercy sound like or what does justice sound like and putting it into a tone or a melody or a harmony, whatever that may look like and just giving it to people who can relate to his heart through that sound. I remember my, I wrote my first song, it was called The Generation and just a week before that, I was hearing the message from my youth pastor in the Philippines. It was just about like how God has called you to be the Lord's army, to be, you know, soldiers of Christ and to be the generation of righteousness and like holy. When I came home that day and just really asked the Lord, what does that sound like? And what does that um, feel like in that moment? I just started just hearing God just say like, you are the generation that I called. You are the the one that's supposed to take a stand. And of course, like, how do I make that sound like? And so I just kept hearing like, you know, marching army. So use like bass lines and using minor chords. Just really like knowing what God feels and for songwriting is really like also applying to like the knowledge of like music that you learned. The very first piece of prophetic art I ever did was, it's called Psalm 91. It's this wood, wooden scene with a large waterfall, then the waterfall basin, and then multi-stream entrances feeding into the pool. A trickle, a flow, an overflow, a babbling brook, you know, a little side stream, and this giant waterfall. And so I'm talking to the Lord like, how do I explain this picture to somebody? What's going on? Like, I didn't have all the language, and that's okay. Encounter usually bequeaths feelings which lead to language. And the Lord says to me, He said, tell him, that he is the basin of the water. He, his job is to receive all ways that I operate in his life. There's always flow from the throne. And I take a step into that reality of, there, there is a function and a flow available for me to partake of that I don't have to make up. I can lean, I can be weak, I can, I cannot know how the whole outcome is going to turn out. But it's about the message. The artwork is, is just a postcard. It's just a, bus, a bookmark. But it's the message. It's the value of the truth. I think from the music perspective, music that just always has to be like, it has to be like this, it has to be like that forceful music, you're never going to capture the hearts of anyone in that way. You can tell when someone is just striving to like, oh, like it needs to be like this, but there's a difference between pursuing God in excellency through like your own strength and pursuing God through uh, in excellency through his strength. And so there's a huge difference. When creating prophetic art, it involves two questions every time for me. And the first question I ask the Father is, I need to know who, you, who do you say you are concerning this nation, this city, this, this event, this circumstance, or this person? Is he the comforter? Is he the friend? Is he providing? Is he restoring right now? That leads into the second question very similar. Then I say, Father, who do you say they are? You can take scripture and prophesy through scripture it is life-giving and, and full of truth. If you couple that with the, just taking the moment and asking. And so when I create prophetic art, it's based on those two questions. Who do you say you are? 
Like I need to know who you are. What banner are you waving right now? And then who am I? Oh, so I'm a friend. I'm, I'm safe. I'm comforted. Like I can ask the Lord who I, who I am all the time, but if I don't know who he is first, there's, there's misplacement. Where do you start when you want to do prophetic art? Like you can actually pick a physical place that you love, that you feel the Lord, and then talk to him about that moment. Stay present in that moment and ask him to take you deeper. And you'll see a, a practical like progression of your, of your gift, of your talent, of your skill. But more importantly, you will have encountered a facet of his nature that you will have you, you have living relationship with and you can be put in any situation and draw from that moment. The first word that I got when I was um, just practicing was like basically like the story of Jacob when he was wrestling with the angel and he and he said I will not let go until you bless me and I kind of just rephrase it like I will not let go until I get to hear what you want to say God, or hear your voice. And sometimes it'll come naturally, but sometimes you really have to fight for it. And I think just that dwelling in that secret place just bursts out so many revelations and like just songs and melodies and other things that the Lord has for you. Like it's kind of like what David did with the sheep with no one around them. And he was singing to God. And in that place, like he had such a true foundation of his love and who he was that where any season he would go to, like he can sing about his heart. And it's really funny because like the book of Psalms is like, sometimes like you read one Psalm, it's like, oh, bless God, like he's so good. And the next day like, oh God, I feel so ashamed. I feel so dirty, like cleanse me from righteousness. But his heart was so centered on him, regardless of what he was feeling, he could sing about him. And I think that really truly comes from a place of just staying in his presence and seeing the beauty around you everywhere you go. How desperate are you? Like, how desperate are you to get in that moment with God? And I'm not even talking about even for music or even for like, I'm talking about in general, like with your relationship with God, is how desperate do you want to see Him? How desperate do you want to hear him? How desperate do you want to paint it out or play it out or whatever it may be? Your desperation will drive you into places you have never seen before, but it really comes from cultivating that desperation. And I love Matthew 5 and it's talking about the Beatitudes. And the first one is, blessed are those who are poor in the spirit and realize their need, need in him, for they will inherit the kingdom of God. And just that desperation just opens the doors to so many things. And so we just need to really be still and just hear what God has to say. And you'll go to places that you'll never imagine. And it's awesome. On a larger scale, like it's, it's fun to do prophetic art when you are making it for a friend or a family member or even if you're in a place of prayer and devotion and but what does it look like when you are wanting to prophesy through your art over a city and over a nation and so in as we were doing this just i was talking you know talking about the power of the holy spirit and what does that look like and just Acts 2 and 4 come to mind, you know. And so the picture I saw was like, what does Acts 2 look like? And so this is kind of, you know, a, it's a duplicate meeting. It's like, it's like a hedge of candles that are on, that have been ignited on fire, but then they're also loosely edifices or buildings. And uh, seeing that the Lord wants to bring revival. He want the Holy Spirit is already at work and he already is moving in the nations. He's already doing things. And so this picture 
it's like it's it's a combination of the it's like the wind and the rain and the fire of the Holy Spirit. It's the it's the joy. It's the it's the season change. It's the refreshment. It's the it's the fire of His justice and judgment, and how it He will have His way. And when I was painting this, I was really excited. I was really. I was like, wow, this really helps my heart for the things that I'm praying for, for my city. And so that is kind of the perspective I come from. And so this is what we're working on. Show me what the colors mean. A beautiful guy. Show me how it sounds like. A beautiful guy. What does it mean? Speak to me. Speak to me. Everything you do, there's mystery and beauty, and everything you say, there's power in your name, and everything you do, there's a purpose and a plan. So God, show me, show me. 